Hey, what's going on guys? This is your old pal CHH. And today guys, I want to tell the story of one of the most infamous boutique label release polls of all time. And this comes at a fitting time considering we've just got the announcement of the Jaws sequels 3 and 4 on 4K UHD coming out this summer. It got me thinking about this. So we're going to talk today about Severin Films. Now Severin Films is a great company and quite frankly I have a lot of great titles from them. I love Severin Films. They did Cemetery Man late last year and it was an absolutely jaw-dropping release. So I want to say right off the bat, this video is not a negative video about Severn Films. As a matter of fact, it's uh, just a story, really. But it's a very interesting one and one of the most whoa moments in physical media. Obviously, you're all familiar with Jaws. Jaws is considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, I think it's Steven Spielberg's best movie. Etc. Etc. There's been a number of great releases for the film, and it's it's a classic. And of course, the sequels. You've got Jaws 2, Jaws 3, and Jaws: The Revenge. Now, one of the interesting things about Jaws: The Revenge is that Jaws: The Revenge was supposedly a movie that was a present for Lorraine Gary, uh, the star of the film. I don't know how true that is or not, but that's what I, I would hear all the time about the film. So that very well may be the case, but I'm not sure. So Severn Films. Now Severn Films is a boutique label company that primarily does a lot of horror style releases. Now I think they may have one-offs of kind of like cult movies, maybe even comedies. I think there was a movie called Overboard that they did. I could be wrong, but I think there was. You know, they were a company I would get a lot of releases from, and I would always be very happy with their releases. So they're a great company. Again, just want to reiterate, this is not a negative video about them. This is just a wild story. There was an Italian movie that was made, although it was shot in Florida, it was called Jaws 5 unofficially. Now, the title you may be familiar with is this. The title is Cruel Jaws. Now, this is a Blu-ray release, an official Blu-ray release of the movie Cruel Jaws. Jaws. Okay, remember that. This is official. This is not any sort of bootleg or anything that's official. Uh, Cruel Jaws uh, was filmed in the 90s and it was pretty much, is a pretty infamous movie. Uh, it, it, it contains images, clips from I think multiple Jaws films as well as another film called uh, Deep Blood which interestingly enough was put out by Severin as well. This is a Joe D'Amato film. Uh, Deep Blood came out in I think 89 so Cruel Jaws aka Jaws 5 was 95. So it was a pretty infamous movie. It's pretty bad but it's hysterical. There's there's infamously this Hulk Hogan lookalike in the movie. Um, maybe they were trying to capitalize on the popularity of Hogan at the time although interestingly enough I think in 95 Hogan was on a lull period uh, because he hadn't started the NWO yet, but that's a whole nother thing, and I'm not going to get into wrestling in this. Anyway, Jaws 5 was a movie I read about or saw in a video, people talking about it, and I was like, oh, there's a Jaws 5. So I quickly learned about the film and how infamous this movie was, and that it was this kind of hodgepodge movie that was done very cheaply, shot at some kind of theme park, I think, where they, you know, they had, you know, they filmed the movie, but they took a lot of stuff from different movies unofficially, so... That happened, and so I tried to watch the film, and so it was on YouTube, so I watched the movie on YouTube. Yeah, it's not hard to understand why the film doesn't have very many uh, big official releases. I remember Scream Factory was making their usual announcements of, okay, here's this that's coming out, here's this is coming out. And this is during the Blu-ray era for Scream Factory. So Scream Factory had announced that they were doing a double pack, uh, which they had done a number of double packs, and a lot of them were pretty good, but there was this one double pack that was announced to have... Cruel Jaws, aka Jaws 5. Um, and I remember seeing that and I was pretty excited about that. And I can't remember what happened, but before too long, that listing was just pulled. Um, I don't remember if they made an official announcement or not on why that was pulled, but it, it got pulled. So Scream Factory never, in fact, put out Cruel Jaws. I think they did put out a double pack that had one of the movies that was going to be included in that, but it was not a Jaws. Cool Jaws double pack. The movie never came out from Scream Factory. I didn't think much of it after that point. Again, I think either, I think as a matter of fact, at that point, I watched the movie uh, right around that time on YouTube as well. So, and I don't think I was too terribly upset about it getting pulled. Um, so anyway, some years go by, it might have been a year or so goes by, and by this point I become a pretty big Severn Film collector. Like I said, I've got a number of great titles from them. Again, if you're, if you haven't gotten a lot from Severn Films, That Cemetery Man was the best release of last year. They really outdid themselves with that. So, you know, around 2020, I think, I know it was pandemic era. All of a sudden, Severin announces something big. Now, I think this would have been a game-changing release for the company because this would have really had them bridge a gap uh, when it comes to Severin and getting a bigger, wider market. They announced that they were putting out 
Drop Dead Fred. Now, Drop Dead Fred is a classic movie. I freaking love it. And I was so happy for Seven. As a matter of fact, I thought, wow, this is great for that company. This is going to be a big deal for them. This is kind of branch them out a little bit and get them a new audience because, you know, there's a cult fan base for this audience that is going to search things out just for that movie. And so this may be the first time Severin can get eyes from different people besides just like low budget horror fans, which I'm one of those, but you know, it just is what it is. I think it was a great pick for them. Uh, I was very excited about Drop Dead Fred. And around that same time, we got the announcement of, you guessed it, Cruel Jaws, aka Jaws 5. Now, I was over the moon about this because I was like, wow, I gotta have this for my collection. This is Jaws, this is a Jaws film. Bad or not, the fact of the matter is, it's called Jaws. So, if you're a fan of the series, even, you know, fans that aren't even really big physical media fans, but just Jaws collectors, because it is one of the most collectible movies, considering how big of a title it is, I think this would be something a lot of people would be interested in. And they had pulled no punches when they were releasing this. Severin announced this, and it came out not too ver terribly long after the announcement. And what was interesting about the announcement was the packages that they were doing. Now, I horribly regret now not getting some of the deluxe things that they did, but they had some bundles, they had some cool releases. As a matter of fact, they put out an unofficial slipcover, which is something Severin does. Um, as a matter of fact, I have one of the unofficial slips they did. Um, one of them was Maniac 2, which is for a movie Joe Spinell did that was not a Maniac film. It's in the vein of a Maniac film, uh, but they did this really gorgeous release. I did a review on that release if you want to check that out. I think they even did Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 for Night Killer, which is what that movie was kind of called and in different markets, even though I think Texas Chainsaw 3 was even out but by the point Night Killer came out. But with Jaws 5, they had this gorgeous Jaws 5 slipcover. It looks like a Jaws film. I mean, so much so that the image of the shark looks like it's pulled directly from the poster of the original film. My buddy Garrett actually has even more information about this when it comes to the bundles that they had. So let's cut to him really quick and let him explain that. But there was also a bundle that got you a red bandana that said Cruel Jaws in yellow, but in the Hogan letters. Oh my God, and, I should have pre-ordered all that. Damn yeah, it. and then you also get a sticker of Hogan, of the Hogan guy leg drop from the shark, and it said Cruel Jaws. So like, they really took that whole gimmick they, they, and like they ran, ran with, with it. it. Yeah, yeah, Brother. for sure. So it's kind of funny. Brother. Jaws 5 is announced. The pre-orders go up and it sells like crazy. People are going crazy for that cool slip that they put out. The bundles, the release itself is selling. I made sure to pre-order this the second it was announced. One of the only times I've ever actually pre-ordered from Severn's website. Of course, I did it again with Cemetery Man, things like that. But I ordered Jaws 5 and I was so excited. All of a sudden, I learned that Drop Dead Fred, which was going to be this big title for Severn, is now going to Vinegar Syndrome. And I was kind of scratching my head. And then I either noticed it or somebody told me, more than likely somebody told me, all of a sudden, Cruel Jaws was pulled from Severin. It was gone. They acted like it never happened. It just disappeared. This caused a lot of controversy. People were wondering what the hell was going on. They made these packages and bundles and gorgeous slipcovers and the movie was pulled. Just gone. All this stuff goes for a lot of money now. What I think probably happened is Universal got wind of this release considering the film has footage that is not owned by the filmmakers for this, for any stretch of the imagination, they were like, oh no. On top of that, they did the unofficial slipcovers, which had images from basically Jaws. I mean, the shark on the cover of the slipcover that they did, that is from Jaws. So it's like a double whammy. I think Universal got wind of that. I think if, if a company is protective over anything, it's gonna be Jaws. And that release was gone. But what threw people off was the loss of Drop Dead Fred. Now, this cannot be confirmed nor denied, but a few people think that Vinegar Syndrome came in to either help Severin out with something in sort of money or some sort of legality and Drop Dead Fred was the trade, or maybe Severin got themselves in deep water and had to pay some sort of legal fee or something, license fee, for that little bit of use that they did and as well as pulling it and then they couldn't afford to get the license for drop dead fred that there's a lot of controversy around that but people were like what the hell is going on so i think it is no coincidence whatsoever that with the pulling of cruel jaws 
they lost what could have been one of their biggest titles at the time, which was Drop Dead Fred. Vinegar Syndrome put it out. They did a great job, but it was a what the F moment at the time with Severin. And it's now become one of the most sought after Blu-ray releases from the company because it will never, this will be the last time this one will probably ever see the light of day officially because this is an official release with special features and it goes for a lot of money. I should have got the slipcover, but I didn't because I didn't want to pay the extra money. But if you go online, the slipcover for this movie goes for a lot, a lot of money. And like I said, it's also interesting that they put out Deep Blood, the Joe D'Amato film, which I think Cruel Jaws even uses <laughs> the ending, bits of the ending of Deep Blood. But yeah, that is the story of one of the most infamous movie pulls from any boutique label of all time. When Severin tried to do Cruel Jaws and do something cool for the fans and put out a nice release and Universal came in and was like... No, I can't confirm or deny what help Vinegar Syndrome did with Severn or if Severn just was like, well, we can't afford to license Drop Dead Fred. Now we're dealing with the legality stuff with this Jaws 5 release. So then Vinegar Syndrome came in and got it. There's a speculation with that. Some people think that there may have been some strings pulled that Sever Vinegar Syndrome did and that was the, the favor or we don't know. But if, if that wouldn't have happened, I think Drop Dead Fred would have been a big deal for Severin and could have really broadened them a little bit. But, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll find out the truth of the matter someday. But that is the story of one of the most infamous movie pulls from a boutique label, Cruel Jaws, a.k.a. Jaws 5. Let me know if you have this title. Let me go. Let me know if you guys remember when this got pulled, what you might have heard behind the scenes. It was a crazy time in the physical media world, guys, and I wanted to talk about it now since we got the announcement of the Jaws sequels on 4K and all that good stuff. So thank you guys for watching. This is your old pal, CHH. I'll see you next time on Tales from Physical Media, I guess is the name of this stuff. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams and much more you can subscribe to my patreon for as little as a dollar a month thank you to my patrons